Hi students! Today you're going to learn idioms beginning with green. An idiom is a group of words which has a different meaning from the meaning of words taken individually. The English language is full of idiomatic expressions and today you're going to learn idiomatic expressions beginning with green and their meanings. The explanation of the idiom is followed by an example sentence. Green fingers. It means to be good at gardening, good at growing plants. Here's an example of a sentence. When Angela can get anything to grow, she has really got green fingers. Let's look at another example of an idiom beginning with green. Green light. It means to give or get approval to do something. Here's an example of a sentence beginning with green light. The budget has been approved, so we got the green light to order the books for the library. Here's another idiom beginning with green. It's green horn. It refers to someone who lacks the relevant experience and knowledge for a job. Let's look at an example. When I joined this school as a clerk, Five years ago, I was a green horn, but I have learned a lot since then. Here's another idiom with green. It's green with envy. It refers to a person who's extremely envious of another one. Let's look at a sentence. When Intan hears the teacher is going to make you the class monitor and not her, she will be green with envy. Let's look at another one. Green around the gills. It refers to someone who looks ill, sick. Let's look at an example of a sentence. Jason did not turn up for the meeting. He was green around the gills for the last two weeks. The next idiom is a green-eyed monster. It means being envious or jealous of someone to show a feeling or resentment of somebody's achievements. Here's an example to illustrate this. Intan is a green-eyed monster as she's so jealous of Farah's success in a business. Today, you have learned six idioms beginning with green. Green fingers, green light, green horn, green with envy, green around the gills and green-eyed monster. Hope you can use these idioms in your essays to make it more interesting. See you next time. Bye. Conjunctions. You mean Marvin and I use conjunctions in our conversation? Yes, you did. And I must say you use them very well. Great. So, uh, what are conjunctions again? Okay, so we don't really know what conjunctions are, but I have heard the word conjunction before. There, you just used one. But we'll come to that later. Now, boys. Conjunctions are words that are used to join phrases or sentences together. Oh. 
Now let's try an example so you can see what I mean. Okay, go ahead. I'll give you two sentences and I want you to join them with a conjunction. Ready? Gus is intelligent. Gus is resourceful. Hey, thanks for the compliment. I always knew I had it in me. That's not what I meant, Gus. I want you to join these two sentences with a conjunction. Ooh, sorry. Rather presumptuous of me. Okay. Gus is intelligent. Gus is resourceful. So we have two sentences that describe similar ca characteristics about Gus. So if we join them... Oh, I got it! Gus is intelligent and resourceful. Uh, Very good. So and is the conjunction. That is right. Now, let's look at the conversation that the two of you had earlier and let's see if you can spot the conjunction. Wait, I think my combine can generate a visual review of our conversation. I miss oh. Lena and Zurida. Oh, well, that's easy. Instead of saying, I miss Lena, I miss the reader, Gus just joined the two sentences with the conjunction and. Correct. Now, Mr. Resourceful, let's see if you can spot the conjunction in Marvin's sentence. Yeah. You know, it's because of them that we're here and not in America right now. I think because is the conjunction, but I don't know why. Yes, the conjunction is because. It shows reason. Oh, meaning that Nina and Zurida going to America is the reason why Marvin and I aren't on that trip. They were chosen instead of us. Correct. Are you disappointed that you didn't get to go? Well, uh, well, uh, a little bit, but Gus and I can't win them all. Nina and Zurida could speak a foreign language, French, yeah. which we don't. That's one of the reasons why we weren't selected. You know, boys, it's all right to feel disappointed. After all, you're only human. <sighs> Okay, so um, I presume Gus and I used more conjunctions? Yes, you did. You know, I wanted to go on that trip more than anything else. However, I'm glad that it was well, Lena and Zurida who got the chance. Well, here, the two sentences are quite the opposite. I wanted to go on that trip, but I was also glad that it was Lena and Zurida who went instead. Now, so what is the conjunction here that links those two sentences? However... Well done. So you see, boys, conjunctions are also used to join sentences that shows contrast or are opposite. Oh. So that means that but is also a conjunction, right? Now, here are a few more conjunctions that the two of you used. You know, I'm only going to laugh if it's really ridiculous. Conjunctions can also be used to indicate condition or a rule. Hmm. Marvin was laying down the condition that he would only laugh if my idea was ridiculous. Very good. And here is another conjunction. Although you're going to say it's ridiculous, I'm going to tell you. Although would be the conjunction, but what is its function? Although indicates concession. Although I knew Marvin was going to laugh at my idea, I still wanted him to know what it was. That is right. You have 
just seen a few conjunctions used by Gus and Marvin in this episode. Let's recall them. And, because, however, but, unless. Now, here are a few more conjunctions. You may have used them, but if you haven't, perhaps it's time you started using them in your sentences. Since, if, even though, until, or, also, as well as, so that. Remember, the more you use a language, the better you will be in it. See you next time. So boys, are you ready for today's lesson? Yes. Let me get our screen going. Right, if you remember the last time we studied conjunctions, today we shall look at prepositions. I know prepositions. They are words used together with nouns and pronouns. Quite right. In fact, prepositions are words that help nouns, pronouns, verbs, and even adjectives relate to an object. Wow! Well, let's see what Gus said to you as an example. I only got 13 out of 20 correct. <laughs> well, here the preposition is out of because it links the noun 13 to the object 20 questions. That is right. But Aunt Mabel, uh, out of is two words. Does that mean that a preposition can be more than one word? Yes, it can. It could be one, two, or even three words sometimes. Oh. So let's look at this example. There were four people standing in front of Jessica. Standing is the verb relating to Jessica, the object. So the preposition connecting the two should be in front of. Oh, yeah, there's a preposition with three words. Great, now you see it. I am sure you'll be able to easily identify the prepositions in the next few sentences. That makes the two of us. Of, because it relates the noun to to the pronoun us. It's true, practice makes perfect. Tell us some more. Did you hear that Lena and Zurina are coming back on Sunday? On is the preposition, also indicating time on Sunday. Very good, gentlemen. As you've seen, prepositions are some of the most common types of building blocks to form sentences. That's because they connect verbs, nouns, pronouns and adjectives to other words. Let's try and recap some of the prepositions that we learned in our earlier lessons. We've got to, out of, in front of, with, at, since, from, on. Guess we should try making our own sentences with the prepositions we just learned. And here are a few more prepositions, many of which I'm sure you will be familiar with. Until, after, before, during, within, across, so that. As I have said before, the more you use a language, the better you will be in it. See you again next time.
So, Aunt Mabel, what are we going to study today? Today, we are going to learn about subject-verb agreement. Sounds familiar, but refresh my mind, please. Sure. Now, a verb in a sentence must always agree with its subject, be it in number or person. So, in simple language, a singular verb must always go with a singular subject. And a plural verb must go with a plural subject? Correct, Marvin. However, there are some <coughs> exceptions, but we'll go into that a bit later. Now, for now, let me give you a sentence in the singular form so that you can see what I mean. Now, let's take the three of you. Marvin, Zerida and I. That's right. And here is the sentence. Each of you has a unique talent. Oh, I got this. Although there are three of us, which is many, the word each of you is considered singular, so we have to use the word has, which is a singular verb. You are right. Now, let's look at other similar examples. Among the cities we visited in California, I think San Francisco is the most unique. San Francisco is singular, so we have to use is. The singular verb must agree with the singular subject. That is right. Now, let's look at other similar examples. Yes, every city is unique and has its own history, but San Francisco has something magical about it. Okay, here. Every city is a singular subject, so it must go with singular verbs. Is and has. Every city is unique and has its own history. Correct. Now, try this. You know, everyone has the dream of doing something sometime. Everyone is considered a singular verb, so we use has. That is correct. Now, let's look at some examples using the plural subject verb agreement. Yeah, Gus and I have been waiting to hear about your experience. <laughs> Piece of cake, Gus and I are plural. So we have, we have to use have, just like we used has for the singular subject earlier. You are right. Now, here is something that Zurida said, and I like her lines because it uses both the singular and plural subject verb combinations. Altogether, there were eight of us on this trip. The, apart from us, there was, there was one girl from Czech Republic and another girl from China. Two boys were from France and two boys were from Russia. Wow, there were quite a few examples there. Let's take the first line. There were eight participants, so that's a plural subject. So we have to use the verb were. Good. Next, she mentions one girl from the Czech Republic. So we use, we use the singular form of the verb, was, to go with the singular subject. Right again. And in the third sentence, I talk about two boys from France. So that's again a plural subject and must have a plural verb to go with it. Were. Two boys were. Very good, kids. So boys and girls, Throughout this lesson, you have seen some good combinations of subject-verb agreements. Let's look again at what subject-verb agreements mean. A verb in a sentence should always agree with the subject, be it a number or in person. This means 
a singular verb must go with a singular subject. For example, everyone has, every city is. And a plural verb should go with a plural subject. Like, all cities are, Gus and I have. And also remember that some words may seem like plural words, like for example, committee, which is what Zurida used in her report. Mm -hmm. These are called collective nouns. Mm. Like group, team, organization. And as always, remember, the more you use the language, the better you will be in it. Bye!